it's a good idea to put down tobacco in the water before a journey. And uh, just out of respect for the water, I send tobacco. hard navigating this morning. The fog is so thick, but it's beautiful. The place is just taming with, with wild birds. Um, there's cormorants, there's ducks, there's all, all sorts of gulls. There is pelicans, um, there's terns. The eagles are always flying around. As a matter of fact, I think they're going to sit right straight ahead of me. Yeah. Looks like today is going to be an absolute stellar day again. Beautiful morning. All these little islands everywhere. So many birds. Quick break on the shore, stretching my legs. Beautiful shoreline here. That boreal forest goes all the way right to the lake. And uh, oh man, I just love that. Saw something here too. Piqued my curiosity. Big pile of rocks. Right here. And there is another one of those seven years imprisonment penalty for removal 1916 i guess i'll leave it there i kind of like being free well i'm about to get back on the water and uh, while i was on the shore for maybe like five minutes if that i uh the wind started kicking in for the day and uh I'm happy because it's coming exactly where I came from and it'll push me exactly to where I gotta go so that's good but uh, I just hope the waves don't get too big Bad. I am trying to stick close to the shore as much as possible. I see a little family of otters. They are one of my favorite animals. So I missed out on the otter fun, but uh, I did get to see them. As soon as I got to shore and I got my uh, DSLR out to film them, they were nowhere to be found. I just entered a group of islands that's, the name is a little bit hard to pronounce, it's the Gasiki Minasakak Islands. I figured going through these islands, I'll be sheltered from the wind and the waves for about 
two to three kilometers. I'm just gonna take my sweet time. I got my DSLR out in the, in the boat here now. And uh, there's just so much to see here. So I'm just gonna enjoy. And uh, hopefully I might even still get to see the otters. That peninsula right there is where I'm gonna come out of. And then I have about a, a maybe 400 meter paddle before I would be able to cut back into this cove if I wanted to, if it is too rough out. But I don't think it's that bad out there. So I'd probably just coast along this entire shoreline, very straight line. And it just keeps going and going and going for like 20, 30 kilometers, long ways. So I got my work cut out for me, but you know what? I got six, seven days to do 100 kilometers along the lake here. And then uh, Albert will be there in Minnetagan to pick me up. So it's lots of time to enjoy. This right here is uh, the end of the islands. So this is where I have to get back out on, in the open, in the big part of the lake. I'm just gonna go to the shore first and uh, pack my camera away. To this little cove to uh, take a little break from those waves and I might just uh, wait till it's a lot calmer because uh, it's pretty intense out there I just like that the wind's right in my back so it's it's working in my favor 
but still it's borderline. So I'm just gonna play safe. I think I put in a good 20 kilometers already today, so there's really no no reason to rush at all. Oh, I'm back in the canoe, and uh, the wind on the lake is still way strong. Now from the other side, there's this big cloud coming in, coming against the wind, and it's starting to make some pretty nasty noise. I hope the wind just blows it away, but uh, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper in this cove and uh, find a little bit more sheltered place for me to hang out and spend the day. So I'm still in that little cove and uh, this is where it gets hard for me guys. I just like to keep going and just put in the work all day long and just make progress. Not a bad view from here. That's the Lake Winnipeg back there. I'm just like looking through my bag to find a new SD card for my GoPro and I'm pulling stuff out and I'm not paying attention to my surroundings at all and all of a sudden I hear this splashing and I look around and this moose just casually looks at me, walks into the water, swims across. <laughs> just like that. Unbelievable. And I'm just in this little bay right at the... <laughs> right on the lake almost. <laughs> yeah, good thing I had my DSLR out. Take a little walk along the shore. Let's go for a little stroll. Now I'm walking here. To me it actually looks like the wind's changing and it's coming more off the shore now. And uh, that might just be safe enough for me to paddle out there which I, I really hope so that'd be super nice because I'm uh I'm gonna get going <laughs> I'm not patient I don't like waiting I love spending time here don't get me wrong but I just want to go it's such a beautiful day windy or not does not matter there's worse places in the world to get stuck and to get windbound and walking to Mr. Moose Right there, yes, I can see him. So I'm all filled up on water again. Um, I'm about to paddle out to the lake again. I see, like, in the middle of the lake, there's tons of white caps. So if I stick close to the shore, it means I'm then out of the wind and probably out of the waves. That's the way it looks to me right now, but I will make sure that that is actually the case. And before I get out to the open part, I will put on my life jacket. This is beautiful actually. Right on. This is exactly what I needed. Still got a little bit of the bigger waves left. But you can see it's a cross wave now. Well, I underestimated the lake, so I uh, I pushed on from the last bay, and uh, I thought it was going to be a lot better and it was for the first like 100 meters and then those waves yeah they're still there
just walking along the shore here I actually did find a place where I could put up a tent that's pretty nice not too bad at all actually a little bit up the hill here's a nice flat spot wide open I can grab some rocks from down by the shore and put up my tent here the only problem is I'm extremely indecisive now if I set up my tent, I commit to staying here longer. So I'm just walking along the shore all the way to the lake and having another good look at the situation here. See, it doesn't look horrible. That's why I thought last time, if I look out there, there's tons of white caps everywhere. So I should wait and uh, probably set up my tent before this thing breaks loose. I'm all set up here on top. I'm just sitting here in my chair with my camera, waiting for the otters to show up. And every now and then they show themselves random spots, but they're very curious about me. Just as curious as I am. So. Just made dinner. And uh, I just want to say these jet boils, I don't know if you know about these, but man, they boil water so fast and they are so fuel efficient. I'm glad I found this little spot in this little cove because the next stretch, I think is uh, there's quite a bit of cliffs and, and there's not a whole lot of coves anymore, all the way to Granite Cove, which is about 10 kilometers away. It's about seven at night now. Early in the morning, it'll be a lot smoother than this. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna set my alarm real early, probably about 4:30. Pack up and go. Holy crap. Wow. Oh, there's the otter right now. Oh my goodness, this place. He was like right by my canoe. Oh yeah, there he is. Wow, that coyote was spectacular. What a beautiful place to spot him there too. Right on the rocks in front of the lake. Wow. And I literally, when I saw him, I just put my camera on everything away and I got ready for bed. I put all my stuff in the tent and I look around and he's right there, right at the end. Wow, what a good way to go to sleep. Then I watched him and he watched me walk all the way along the shore here. He might just go all the way around the bay and come back around here. I hope you can see all the bugs I'm dealing with here. It's a uh, quarter after four in the morning. I packed up early and uh, I am just covered in them. Just covered. But I'm wearing my buck sweater. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how good you can see, but I'm, uh, I'm prepared. So not too bad. Anyway, it's time to set out. Thank you campsite, but it's time to leave you behind and uh, it's daylight now. It's a uh, quarter to five in the morning, time to hit the water. Well, it looks like my plan worked and uh, it's nice and calm out on here now. 
I hope it'll last for at least the morning. Like I said, it's only five in the morning, so I have about seven hours until noon. I think I can take this thing off now. There's still lots of mosquitoes, but not anywhere near as many as on the campsite. Right here on the left, there's uh, the last cove for the next 10 kilometers. entered this little cove this is called uh, granite quarry cove and uh, supposedly there's an old abandoned quarry here I don't know if you can see that shoreline straight ahead. This whole bay is called Loon Bay. And uh, I'm about halfway my crossing from the main shore to Monk Island. This crossing is the biggest crossing my whole trip. It's about five kilometers. It's 7.30 in the morning. It's beautifully calm. Just the slightest little breeze. So yeah, five kilometer crossing. I think I'm about three kilometers in, two kilometers away from Monk Island. I think I'll get there around 7.30 and then that means I have paddled 15 kilometers already today and it's only 7, 7.30. made it across. Well, I just rounded the Loon Straits that long peninsula that comes up while well, I was on uh, at the end of uh, Loon Straits there, Monkman Island. I cut in between and I met some, uh, some pretty cool people that uh, have a place up there. And uh, they were just fishing out on the dock and I joined them for a little bit. I pulled out my fishing rod, I caught a couple of walleye and uh, gave them to, to them for them to keep. And they gave me some uh, some fresh food, we got a fresh sandwich in my barrel, some, some peanuts and a muffin. Pretty good exchange, I say. on the beach. Let's see if there's any tracks, see what lifts here. Looks like we got I think that's a coyote. Look at this young eagle flying right over. And then here we got some very obvious moose track. And another one here. And while I'm walking around here, I'm uh, enjoying a beautiful fresh sandwich. <laughs> Day 18 of my trip, I'm on a fresh sandwich. I 
been eating dehydrated meals for 18 days at Cliff Bars. Thank you very much. If you're watching, thank you. Guys, I'm just walking on the beach here. Look at this. Oh my God. What a beauty. Mom and a cat. I'm gonna back up. Wow. Push on a little bit further. I think I found home for the night here. Um, that's an, a tributary, like a river coming into the lake here. And uh, I got this nice flat rock here. A little bit of brush to cover me from the wind. Not that much cover to be honest though. But I hope I can uh, maybe catch a little bit of fish here too because the river comes out here. Here's a little bay. And then right at the lake. So you got this big flat open rock here. So I'm gonna set up my tent on the highest spot, which is nice and flat. Just right here. I'm gonna have to clean up my tent a little bit on the inside. Let me show you how many mosquitoes there were last night. So this morning when I rolled up the tent, I just opened up the doors, threw everything out, and just in those couple of seconds, the amount of mosquitoes that went inside. Let's have a look. Just look at all the little carcasses on my door. Just everywhere. That's my pile of dead mosquitoes that I swept up in my tent. That's just from last night. Watch this. So I just set up my tent, right? <laughs> Another moose. I think that marks day eight straight of seeing moose now. That one was close. He, uh, he was in the water on this side of my campsite and I filmed him for quite a while before he even noticed me because I was downwind. I love seeing wildlife. That's why I do these trips, man. Like, <laughs> so worth it. It is a super hot afternoon. Not a cloud anywhere. Sun straight up, wide in the open, and there's no shade anywhere really. No trees for me to put up a tarp here. So uh, I'm sitting out on the rocks right in the wind. That's the coolest place I can find right now. I just hope my, my feet won't burn too bad. <laughs> I'm just reading my book, uh, Hap Wilson. It's insane how fast this goes by. Like, just, oh man, I don't even want to talk about it to be honest. I don't want it to be over. <laughs> I just want to stay up here and do this. Yeah. I moved back to my tent here and I'm sitting here reading and there's another moose running around in the water over there. I'm just going to grab my camera and film him so you guys can see him too. Thank you. 
I'm gonna see if I can catch some sepia. I'm gonna go up this little river and uh, I have no idea, I don't know nothing about this river, but hey, it's a river coming into the lake here. So I assume there probably is some fish in there. Well, this is a lot more creek than, uh, than a river. Anyways, I'm gonna go back out to the bay, to one of the islands maybe, and cast from there. <laughs> We're eating fish tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'm gonna try to catch one more because this is the second bite I got. <laughs> I'm gonna eat good tonight. Sweet. So I got two of these bad boys and uh, yeah. Beautiful fish, eh? Okay, I'll make an end of them quick and humane. That's gonna be pretty good dinner. I'm excited. I'm very excited. See, after 18 days, I just didn't expect to catch fish. But uh, these are nice. I'm gonna be full boy tonight. That's quite a bit of meat for one person, but I'm gonna have it all. I'm gonna eat it all. That's all the meat I got off the two fish. That's a, that's a lot of meat. I got my fish cooking here. And I can see where all the fish is at because all the birds, they're all over there. Let the feast begin. Oh yeah. I put just a little bit of salt over top and then a madras, which is a curry mix. I'm so glad I tagged this part of Lake Winnipeg onto my trip. So I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest. Man, this is wicked. This is way beyond expectations.